Hello and welcome to Climbing Daily. Now we're not in a building site, I promise. We are at this man's house, Mr. Tom Randall, who you all know, uh, and we are at your cellar, which has got to be one of the most legendary training areas in Sheffield, I reckon. Well, I think it's part training cellar and part building site at the moment, as you've seen. Um, but hopefully you'll see today that we've got the original uh, training area and the stuff that me and Pete have been using for the last seven years or so. And now we're starting to expand and we're, we're going bigger, we're, we're changing things up and as ever always doing something a little bit different. Awesome, well we're going to head inside, apologies about the noise if you hear any banging or soaring, we're in a building site. Should we do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so coming into the room, uh, straight away you've got the first crack feature running across the room uh, at a sort of head height. Yeah, so this section here is actually the original simulator that I first ever built and this used to be in my living room in a flat that I lived in Sheffield maybe 10 years ago mm -hmm. and this is the green spit replica and that's kind of more or less where it all really started from. Looking at it you've got various features bolted on the sides so there's a few hand holes around the edges but the crack itself is what like normal sort of hand jam? Yeah this is bomber hands that's what we, that's what we call this bomber hands or, or a belay <laughs> um, and then on the outside we've got all these edges and crimps and those are actually mainly on there because when I had this crack across the, and it was right across the middle of the living room in my flat, mm. was I had a lot of comp climbers used to come around my house at the time, and I needed to put something on it that was appealing for them to all have a go. Okay. Uh, so that's why those are on there, and they've kind of stayed as a historic uh, artifact. Let's imagine I'm climbing along here. I'm underneath, 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 and then into this room. Yeah, little crux through the doorway. So you actually come through the doorway itself, reach through, and then continue on. Yeah, yeah, so uh, this is the first, I don't know, 20 feet of hand crack, and then comes through here into another continuation of hand crack. The sizes get a little bit more tricky on this side, and then that leads us into the main off-widthing area where Pete and I spent a lot of time training for century crack. And over there, um, you know, we've got all different sizes of off-widths and the hastinator and everything. So it's, it's kind of like a combination of all different widths and training tools if you want to be, you know, good at crack climbing. <laughs> And the little hangy slingy thing, is that like a little mono mono section? Yeah, this is just, I mean, look at it. It's, it's like a little comfy mono jobby. And you know, if you're not into your monoing, just, just think how comfortable that's gonna be when you're doing a little campus move on it. Tom, you, you spent too much time in this cellar, it's in no way comfortable. Um, <laughs> let's, let's go down into the off width bit and have a look. Okay, so in this section here, that I can see there's so much history, there's so much writing on the walls, little messages, suck it in fatty, um, lots of tick marks for reps, I presume, over there? Yeah, I mean, just above you is the Board of Truth, which was the record that me and Pete for, put for how many laps we'd done in the cellar training for Century Crack. Mm -hmm. And that really was about creating a visual record that we knew we'd put the work in and the time in, because when we were essentially training in the dark and we had no idea how hard the project was and whether we were ever going to be a good off-width climber, we needed that reassurance to look at this massive tally board and think, ah, oh, you know what, we put in a lot of effort. Yeah, there's a lot of hours of work in that tally board. Yeah, it was like a, re a self-reassurance thing and I realise now looking back at it, it was basically a psychological trick to make us feel more confident than really we were. This wide one here is kind of body width and you can get one hip in and it's more, it's called the Hastonator, named after Stevie Haston. And it's like the the equivalent of dead hanging and hangboarding that people do. So you know they get in a hangboard and they hang for seven seconds yeah. and then three seconds rest. We do exactly the same thing, but with body jams. So you kind of go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, and then jump off, then go back on in it again. So it's like a way of developing strength for off widthing positions. And then this, these two here were some of the first ever finger cracks I made and they're 
absolutely hideous. They're horrible. They're really uncomfortable and painful. And that was the bit that I kind of learned my lesson that if you're going to make finger cracks to train on, which is what we ended up doing with Cobra, um, you have to make it way more comfortable. Otherwise, you get injured too quickly. So it's interesting to see the progression of this because we spent some time in that crack school uh, in Wales. And to see this, which was obviously like where it all started, to that where it's all polished and you've got nice beautiful holds and you're teaching people, it's been quite a journey. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a really long time coming and I honestly could have never thought back then that we'd end up with thousands of people being interested in crack climbing, but doing it indoors and kind of getting into the training thing. And even now when I get sent messages or pictures on Facebook or Instagram by people that have built their own crack training machines all over the world, it just amazes me. And there are so many people out there, like dark horses, all doing it. And it's freaking amazing seeing this psyched group of people that are well into their crack climbing. So this is what's already established, but I know you've got an extension planned into the next room, uh, and that's for the Crucifix project, right? Yes, I'm really psyched about this. So the kind of the, the backstory behind this is that we've got some work being done on the house at the moment, and we're doing a kind of normal house extension work. And I was having a chat with the builders, and I realised that what we could do is not create normal foundations for the house, but just extend the cellar and double the size. And I thought hey, this is the best thing ever. I don't care about the rest of the house. I just want to have even more cellar to make a mega training facility. And so we've designed it so there's a much longer, bigger, more open section where we can put a perfect exact replica of Crucifix and me and Pete can hopefully have a better chance on it. All right, this I have to see. Can we go and have a look? Yeah. Right, so moving into this room, it all opens up quite a lot, and there's actually there's actually some space in it, Tom. Yeah, um, I think we've almost gone almost modern German indoor climbing wall. I mean, you look around, and it's it's practically the the iPod or the the Apple Mac of of cellars. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. When you paint it all white, and you've got some like mar maybe a marble floor, that would just, be, just finish it off, look beautiful. Oh yeah, that would be great. I'm not sure that's in the budget for the, the oh, cellar. Fine. Fine. So someone will see this video and then just chuck you loads of money, it'll be okay. I could whitewash some mattresses maybe, just a load of white gloss paint on some stinky yeah. old mattresses. That could that could work. Mm. Um, so your plan is, so the, the end of the crack I can just see through the other room, and then you're gonna extend it through here, underneath that doorway, and then all the way down? Yeah, so what we wanted to do is run a big long conti continuous section that was you know it's got to be close to 30 feet of unbroken crack and I realized in the old cellar that we were climbing through doorways and round you know bits of machinery and things and it was really awkward whereas now because the crux on or the crux section on the crucifix is so hard and right at the limit of what we can do I just don't want to be having bits of doorway and a, a pillar in the way whilst you're trying to do a really really hard move so in here i can put straight down the middle just an exact exact replica of that route and perhaps an intro section into it and, and an outro and the crux itself of the crucifix project what does that involve for people who don't know it so the crux is uh depends on how much you consider hard versus really hard but maybe a 10 10 really hard moves in the mo in the middle and it's all uh, mono finger jams. So you're, you're essentially inserting in one finger into the crack and hanging on the side of your joints. So it's not really a normal mono where you're, you're weighting the pad of your finger, you're just weighting the sides of the finger. And you're making a series of quite long moves between those monos in the crack and spinning around on your feet at the same time. But because the crack's pinched right down to fingers, it means the feet are utterly awful. So it's a mixture between campus and I don't know symbolic well it, you're putting your feet next to the crack but I'm not sure how much they're working okay it sounds truly hardcore and I can't wait to see this when it's extended it, it's interesting because like as part of what I do I get to travel to a lot of places and I've seen the shiniest of training areas all beautifully done and this for me is by far the best just because it's, it's just real and like I can imagine the sweat and blood and tears that you guys would be put into those laps and all the writing on the wall it's just it's cool to see it yeah, uh, it's nice to see that you, you find it motivating I because I, I, I always think that loads of people go, oh man, this place looks like it's just so rubbish, but it's 
it's really important to me that when I create a training facility that I want to work in and Pete wants to work in is that it needs to be pretty rough and ready and not too much luxury because you, you need, if you're going to suffer and you're going to work hard, you can't have the luxuries of life and the niceties and the distractions. It needs to be just unpleasant. You've got to get on with it and do the job in hand and not get distracted by a nice sofa, a bean bag or your laptop. No, that's, that's fair enough. Well, Tom, thank you so much for showing me around. Uh, we'll let the builders get back to it. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, if you're in the area, you can't come here because you're going to get killed by machinery. See you soon. <laughs>